Radio. Radio. This is episode number 51 of the Leggett Podcast with myself, Tom Wickstead. It's me, Andy Grant, and this week we have Robbie O'Neill. What's happening? You all right? I'm all right. Oh, you're finally here, man. <laughs> I know, man, yeah. After a six, a seven hour train journey. Yeah, it's been it's been intense today. What's in it? Storm Chiara? Is it, is it Chiara no, or Chiara? No, because oh, no. <laughs> Trains can be a nightmare at the best of times, but that's seven yeah. hours. That's a, that's a good effort. Though. Chiara's being my head. That was <laughs> insane, that. A lot of coffees needed. Go, yeah. <laughs> Going on trains just for a quick minute before we get into it. I uh, tweeted this morning, so I was in London just for the day yesterday with me little girl. And I just was sitting there bored and I thought, I wonder what price, you know, if you were going to get just an any time return, like a family of four. Because I went with my friend and her little boy. And if you just went on like a Monday morning, okay, granted that is peak time and done an any time return, 750 quid it is. Fucking hell. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> and first class is 1200. That's just, why, why? Two adults and two kids to London return, any time return. First class, 1,200 quid, normal, 750. And then that's where anyway, I tweeted that this morning. And I had some jobs worth go, something like, oh, well, it isn't any time return. You know, you didn't specify when you... I thought, fucking, that's the Sunday. <laughs> fucking well, yeah. turn it in, it's a rip-off. It's all you need to know. Fucking, that is, that is extortion, isn't it, trains? It's bad, man. And when it's like that, seven hours. I imagine if you'd paid 750 yeah. quid and you were on a seven-hour train today. Lad, sometimes as well, like, it, if you pay all that money and it's like... Say you were 15 minutes late. Mm. I'm getting on my eyeballs here, but I'm going to ask the... the um, <laughs> you crack if, on. If you were 15 minutes late and you paid all that dough and you missed your meeting, they would not reimburse you. Mm. Yeah. They're, they're absolute yeah, yeah. frauds. I think yeah. I might have mentioned that on the podcast before, but I was on the train once, and if you're a certain time delay or whatever, I think it might... Let's just say for argument's sake, it's 30 minutes. Mm. He was like, guys, we're going to be 40 minutes late. Because that's over 30, you're allowed to claim it back. So I was thinking, oh, not the end of the world. And I swear he was fucking speeding up all the way so we weren't late. But he was, like, happy about it. He was going, oh, guys, you're only 38 minutes late now. I'm going to get you there on time. I'm thinking, just relax, I'll have my money back. Just fucking chill. He's like, oh, we're only there. What a fucking sit. Anyway, I digress. We are here, mate, because of Seconds Out. Yeah. Which is your project, which um, it's been going on a while. It started... Obviously a good while back now. Yeah, man. How long has it been on YouTube for now? Um, we got it on YouTube in January. I think it was the second week of January we got it up. And um, yeah, we've just we've just put it up so people can see it as and when. Because we were talking about this on the way, and we'll get into the whole how it started. But the reason for YouTube, I think, is a big thing as well. Because with it being a passion project like this, the idea is for as many people to see it as yeah. possible because of, of what it's about. Mm. Which is, I think, is a big call, isn't it? Because you think if sometimes you do something, I don't know, in, in the media and stuff, you you could get someone to come in and pays you money and says, oh, we'll do it on this, we'll do that. But you're thinking to yourself, not as many people are going to see it if it's something if it's not on as something as accessible as YouTube. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, it it was the um... even even for example Netflix. You look how big Netflix is. What's to say if it's if it's on Netflix? It could just sit in a corner of Netflix. I'm not saying you wouldn't say yet to Netflix, but I mean it's. It's an interesting one, isn't it? Because if you've done something, you want to make it as widely accessible as possible. But that's because that's it. It's about I think with with something like Netflix, I think I don't know the exact number, but I think there's something like fifteen thousand titles on there. Is it that much? Yeah, yeah. yeah, and that's insane, isn't it? When you think about it. Mm. So if you've got like say you had a fifteen minute short film on a platform like that, it's just going to get gobbles up. Yeah, mm. no one's going to watch it. Whereas with with YouTube, I think when you've got like that URL, that you that URL mm. URL that's unique to that project. If you get it circulating, it, it's you know yeah, it's yeah. gonna it's gonna get views and you know, I mean it's it's got a few views up to now, which is good. You know what I mean? Mm. And, but it's it was yeah it's essentially just the, it's the easiest the most conv- most convenient thing for your everyday person to be yeah. able to access Yeah, of course it is. Yeah, yeah. I mean? yeah, it's huge. Yeah, no, I'd say that. YouTube would be the best thing. What, what, just so, so obviously people yeah. know what we're talking about, what is the, what is Seconds Out? Okay. Um, so it's a short film and it is about a, a young boxer who is trying to come to terms with the mental health issues that he faces. Um, it's a film which, you know, in, in, as I say, it's a short, so it's only 15 minutes long. And what we tried to make was a film which wasn't too preachy about mental health mm. and about how you should deal with your mental health. I mean, you, you can speak to 10 different people and I'm sure those 10 different people give you, um, they, they'd give you advice or 
they give you methods in which they believe that you should deal with your mental health if you're having difficulties with it. Um, we, we wanted to make a film which kind of said that, 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 that there is no set way. That, uh, sometimes different different ways work for different people. Mm. Uh, but we wanted to make a film which kind of said to young men in particular that <clears throat> if you are suffering, if you are struggling, you can't talk to people. And you're not a shit house if you do it. Yeah. Do, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because... I know from my own personal experience that if I was struggling with things, um, I'd I'd bottle it up mm. for a long period of time, um, and I'd deal with shit in in a way which probably wasn't you know conducive um, or beneficial to myself. And then you know, a couple of instances occurred where I thought I've actually got to mm. take matters into my own hands, and then I did, and uh, and it, it, it worked out for me, and then. I kind of drew on other people, and I wrote a film. I wrote a film. Yeah. When when you say you suffer, what, yeah. what 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 exactly was it? Um, I, I mean, I've had like I've had real like problems with anxiety since I was a teenager, mm. and my background's a Czech, like a kind of Czech one. You know, I'm, like there's, there are people in my family that have like suffered with mental health issues, and um, like. So there's that straight away. And, oh, then, and was that the reason for the film? Because of your own experiences or was it something that you're seeing around you and thought, you know, it's there's a lot of people, it's in the news obviously a lot, or was it was it a bit of both? A bit of both. A bit of both. Um, as I say, like the a close family member suffered with theirs much worse than I'll ever su- such would ever suffer. You never know to yet. But, well yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um but um and that kind of like left the indelible mark on me you know as I was growing up and it led to like problems because I didn't necessarily know how to deal with that and understand it I guess as well yeah because you know I was a kid yeah and I seen like someone suffering and uh, I didn't fully understand that and then yeah so and then like I kind of lost my way a bit in the world my teens um, it was a bit of a no I suppose you know I went to college Wanted to be an actor, um, quickly realised that that wasn't going to work out because of, you know couldn't afford to go to drama school. And if I'm truth be told, at eighteen, nineteen, I was, I, I was probably too obsessed with being one of the lads. You know, what I, mean? <laughs> I didn't have I didn't have the drive at that age to yeah, yeah. to really follow through, even though people were saying you should get away you know, when you should stay in or whatever, I was just like, fuck that, you know, I just, it just yeah. didn't seem like, yeah, totally, yeah. Right. I think in this, in the city, in the cities that you grow up, that is like, for anyone who's listening, who's maybe not from a city or from the areas like where I mean, you go up, grew up, it, it probably sounds mad, doesn't it, because you think, mm. oh, well, that's just, you just go away and you, you can't do that really, yeah, when, yeah. well, it's hard to, isn't it, it is, in the city. It is, and it, the weird thing is with me is like, even when I, I like I can sing and when I was a kid I used to sing I used to be in like, like I used to go around pub singing you know a few of my mates did and you that. yeah 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 and even I was embarrassed about that cause I didn't want anyone finding out in case people took the piss because I was doing that and I was playing football or you know and, and stuff like that so no one at our school really knew that I did that and if I did if it how had mad the, is that isn't it? Yeah. but if it, had, if it would have got out I'd have been Oh, can I shame, Bobby? You know as well, though, <laughs> where me and you from, like, similar type backgrounds, look at look at Webster as well, he told the exact same story. Yeah, did, yeah, Webster yeah. used to, didn't want anyone to know he played the guitar. That, but that's, I, I can totally, like, resonate with that. So when I was 13, and this is why I respect Jamie so much, I was 13, and I, I, think, I think my granddad bought me a guitar when I was about 12, you know, because I started secondary school, and he, he gave guitar lessons, and my granddad was like, you can get guitar lessons now. And I was like, all right, so he buys me a little guitar <clears throat> and he buys me this acoustic and I start taking it and, I've, you know, I pick it up really <laughs> handily and I'm like, the, you know, I was, I was a natural, essentially. Um, so I, I progressed quite rapidly and it got to Christmas and my granddad could see how good I was doing. He buys me this, like, mini Gibson Epiphone and it was, like, cherry red. I had this, like, like, these little spikes on the corner and it was just a boss guitar and I was into Oasis and people like that. Yeah. So, I, I you know, I thought it was an old Gallagher, you know what I mean? <laughs> and then, um, next thing I know, I get on the bus and I'm going, I, I was going to school one day and I was in year seven, I think, or eight. And um, at this point, no one had said anything to me about the guitar. And these two lads got on, they were in year 11 and they were like, ah, get on you, you fucking queer with your guitar. And I was just like... 
pardon. <laughs> you know, I was just like, I just, I just, I just, I just ran into myself, which, funnily enough, was like, wasn't really me because I, I was, I was quite multi as a teenager. You know, mm. if anyone put it on my toes, I wasn't going to like shake it. Yeah, yeah. But when they kind of confronted what I perceived to be my masculinity, I fucking I parcelled it, mm. and I went home that day. I put my guitar in, and I didn't touch it till I was eighteen. Really? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I bought my guitar when I was eighteen. That's sad, that is. Yeah, it? really sad. And that that like so when when I know of lads who just kind of say to people, oh, "Fuck it, yeah. I'm gonna do what I yeah, want to do." Yeah. I respect them so much. Yeah. And um, yeah, and things like I mean, if if I knew now things that were cool, but I mean, I was the exact same. Like you just think, oh. I never, never, would really took an interest in music yeah. lessons or and or drama lessons or anything. Because again, that was the word "gay." I don't really hear it anymore now. But in school, that's that was the word you used to. Every other word yeah, was yeah. "that's gay." That's gay. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. it. It's what well, it was when I was growing up. It's mad. Gay. It's mad, and like you know, it, it, when it, it's just a weird thing. It's like really like to to be bothered about know, know, and yeah. particularly when you're heterosexual as well do you know what I mean uh, yes, <laughs> like, no. you're like why are you arsed I know and, and um, <sighs> but that's that's a mental health thing as well isn't it yeah. to be part of that I want to be perceived to be cool and with, Ex- with the lads and I want to be you know I just want to be different and exactly because you're kind of conforming aren't you mm. and any, anything that kind of like moves away from that it makes you feel a bit and um, but anyhow like it was weird though that I carried on singing and put the guitar down but because no one ever said anything about the singing, I just, you know, I cracked on with it. Mm. But the guitar, like, when I think about it now, it, it proper saddens me yeah, because yeah, yeah. I see me mates in bands, like, lads who are mates with now, you know, and, like, I envy them. Mm. I envy them because, you know, I'm an actor, but I firmly believe, like, no one touches a, a human being like a musician does. Mm, you know, they yeah, don't yeah. have fucking, yeah. they don't have the soliloquy from Macbeth or, uh, from, or from Hamlet or a wedding duty. They'll have like, <laughs> yeah. they'll have slide away. Yeah. Or, you know, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. Even things me when you go to like a house party and stuff and someone says, oh, does that a guitar? Yeah, I'll have a go. And someone can play a guitar. Yeah, it's just it's the coolest, coolest, yeah, it's yeah, the coolest thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, And it was like, you know, I, I, to be fair, I, I hardly play my guitar now. But when I went to drama school, and I was 25 when I went to drama school, I started to play a hell of a lot more. And I started writing songs and stuff like that. And that was like, I mean, my songs are garbage. You know, I'm not going not gonna to say they're any good. They're probably shite. But I like them, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, it gives you that confidence as well, doesn't it? You know, to get in front, if you can get in front of people and sing, yeah. or, do you know what I mean? Then maybe the acting can come a little bit, not that I'm saying, to, mm. you know. but Yeah, I think, well, yeah. I think actually that kind of later on, later along the line, helped because I think how I fell into acting like the way it did was like I wanted to do music production I was into hip hop and stuff like that and it um, and I wanted to be I was like I could do like be a producer yeah you know I was listening to a lot of like Nas and people like that and I thought you don't need I'm, I'm wrong like but at the time I thought you didn't need any discernible like skills to be a music producer <laughs> It's daft, isn't it? I thought you just press like press buttons and twiddle like you know twiddle knobs and that. And it looks like to be fair. It's yeah, it funny. It? Yeah. So I thought I'll do a course, but I, I uh, the college I tried to get on the course on. When I turned up, they said there's no space for you. But I, luckily, I knew the principal and she put me on the acting course. Um, and I hadn't done acting at, at, at school because I went to West FX and they didn't do drama GCSE or anything like that. Um, and they kind of and they said, you know, your GCSE you mean you can do a, a national diploma. So I did that. Mm. And then that college closed down and he ended up at the community college. And that's where I kind of like realised that, oh, I could do this. Because even though I hadn't done much in comparison to some of the people there, I quickly realised that I was either on a level or better mm. than some of the people. Really? Mm. So... That's how the acting kicked off. But and how old were you then when you start acting? When I, when I went to college, yeah. um, 17, 18. Yeah. yeah. And then by the time, but by, as I said before, like I was more interested in being one of the lads. And by the time I was 20, I was I was just like, I was just doing menial jobs. I was either labouring or working in call centres. And then I did my knee and playing football. And after that, I was just in a call centre for about 12 months and then lost the job. And ended up at drama school. 
because I thought, fuck, it, I've got to do something now. You know, it yeah. was, it was I have a den or another. It, it is so. such a hard age that I think, though, yeah. those, those like years, I, you know, in some ways as well, I, I feel a bit lost really because I didn't, again, very similar to you, kind of one of the lads, and then I ended up falling into sixth form because didn't really know what else I wanted to do. So I had this year of sixth form, I didn't really feel a part of it. So then I joined the Marines, loved the Marines, but was only in the Marines for a few years before I got injured. So although I love my time in the Marines, when I look back now, as some of my friends who are still in it, don't feel like I was really there for ages. And then when I come back to like the lads I'm, um, or my mates from school, I don't feel sometimes a part of them because I was away in the mm. Marines for it. So you kind of have this feeling where even though you were there and you've done your thing, you feel a bit a bit lost in it all and you don't really belong in, yeah, in yeah. any real... I do envy, I, I envy people who, who know exactly what they want to do from yeah. like, you know, even 9, 10, 11. Yeah. And they're just... They're able to just go la- la- laser focused on yeah. that one thing, and just you know, there are no distractions, and that's what they want to do. Because you know, there's so much time that we've wasted trying to figure out that we want to what we want to do. And it's I think that's so true as well because they say like I think to be an expert or something is that you've got to spend ten thousand hours. Yeah, yeah, there's a book on it. I yeah, think isn't there? Something yeah. like that. Yeah. And it's like it makes sense, doesn't it? You know, when someone's a child prodigy, like, like, oh, fucking hell, they've not, you know, they've been at the piano, like, it's every take-off, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but I think, like, it interests me as well, like, what, what you're saying about going to the Marines, because I, I went to an old boys' school, and I loved it, mm. I loved it, because it was just a buzz, it was a buzz just being army mates all the time, yeah. you know, and then I remember, like, the military coming in, and I was like, I think that's what I want to do, I was mm. actually... I mean, we had the Marines, it was the, I think it was the military police, and I think the, what they yoked me on was, uh, they wanted me to be like, you, you, you know, they were like, you know, military police go on to be bodyguards for Tony Blair or Gordon. <laughs> and I was like, fucking hell, I want to bet at that. Yeah, you yeah. know, uh, when you're 15, 16. Yeah, yeah. And also, it was the time, I at that time, 9-11 had just happened. Yeah. So my mind was full of like... Military fantasies, stuff, you know yeah. what I mean? I was like, fantasies. Like, fucking hell, you know, here's the world. I, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't um, but I feel like it was. I wonder if, like, that was kind of peaked by me wanting to continue the buzz I was having at school yeah. at that time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think definitely it was for me, like, because I, when I went to sixth form, a lot of my mates who I was good mates with were working on building sites and doing apprenticeships and various things. And I was in sixth form with a lot of people who I didn't really hang around with. I was kind of searching for that for that buzz again. And yeah. in the Marines, I never felt like I worked a day in my life because it was just such a buzz all the time. It's like, good it, was just, it? it was just a laugh. Like, I used to think, I mean, I was on about £800 a month, I think. So it was fuck all. But for me, I was a kid, like 17, 18. I'm with all my mates, but in the gym every day. We just with each other all the time, constantly taking the piss out of each other. Then at a weekend, I had like this eight hundred pound in my bank, and I'm thinking, fucking hell, I'm just go and do whatever I want with this now. Drink as much beer yeah, with it, and then I'm with all my mates. And it was like, <laughs> I've not even worked for it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm mad, but I guess it was that same thing of just searching to be part of something. Well, it's interesting then as well because, like, when I so when I stopped, I stopped acting. It was nineteen, twenty, and it was like that. That's when I said to myself, I'm like, I can't do this. It's not for me. I just said. We just didn't enjoy it. I, I did, but it was kind of like when my mates were going to drama school, and I seen all the rigmarole that went with it, and it was just as I said that like idea of I'd rather just be like safe. I'd rather just be one of like as I said I just wanted to be. I was just obsessed with this idea of being like just one of the lads and being normal, you know. And also like at that time, you know. Me, me ma's on her own so I was the eldest of three so there's that kind of I mean there was no pressure from my family whatsoever but in my head yeah. I kind of thought I've got to provide you mm. yeah, I've yeah. got to get a job steady job so I ended up doing like whatever I could and then you pay and keep I was paying keep you know what yeah. I mean <laughs> and like saying this to me mate the other day like people don't pay keep and I can't get my head around it <laughs> I can't get my head around it but since I was uh, like 18 I've had to pay me way and yeah. how much did you have to pay at the start? fucking hell it, was, it wasn't that much at the start but when I was working full time it was a couple of hundred quid it was I can't remember the exact amount but I wasn't on much I wasn't mm. on much when I was on the call centre I was on like less than a grand a month after tax so and there was a large chunk of it that used to go so 
Oh, your mum's there rolling in it yeah, every month. <laughs> nah. well, like the like, mafia. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, but it was like I think that's a good thing though. Getting having to pay keep though. It just like keeps you like because I've got that's a, some family arguments in ours at the moment. My younger <laughs> sister pays hardly fuck all. Yeah. Like yeah. she pays like it was, doesn't even cover the counter tax type thing. But I I argue to, to my dad and I say you're doing her a disservice because when it comes for her to live in a real in the real world and she gets a first council tax bill or first gas bill or first electric <laughs> yeah, bill she'll be like yeah. fucking hell hang on I didn't have to pay this you know <laughs> and I think it's good to kind of get that in as a young age that well, responsibility I, that's it man and it's like I think at first my mum was working so when my mum was working I didn't really have to pay it you know what I mean but mm. then when my mum weren't working it was like yeah I've, I've got it all post so um, so I did that for a bit and then. And do you think there were all these little little bits of not getting into drama school till so when how old was you in drama I was, school? I applied when I was when did I get made redundancy? Um two thousand. I, I think when did the credit crunch happen? Two thousand and eight. Two thousand and eight, yeah. yeah. So yeah. at that point I was working in Bank of Scotland, H Boss in their call centre and speak. And that happened and I got sold those volunteer redundancies and I was like Ooh, could be an out here. Because mm. I was dead unhappy. I was like, I, I had no money in my pocket at the end of the month. And I was like, maybe now is the time to apply. And a few of my mates had gone to drama school, obviously, you said. <coughs> and a good mate of mine who's an actor called John McGrellis was at Bristol Old Vic. And I said to him, because he, like a few people had said to me over the years, lads, you should give it a go, you know, you, it's a waste. So I text John and we had a chat. And he said, yeah, I'll apply. So I applied. And um, I thought nothing would come of it. I went back. I went back to the old college, seeing the old teacher, and I said, "Look, I want to go to drama school." And he's like, "Fucking hell, you've left it a bit late, aren't you?" But I mean, I think yes, I say that. But I know people are going to thirties. You know mm. what I mean? But I think for him, he was very much like people at eighteen. They go, you know. And I went. Well, I want to go, and I've chose these speeches. Can you work with me on them? And he went, "Yes." Yeah. So I'd like when I was, I'd, I'd go in. And I was still I was still waiting, working up to me notice at that point. So I'd go in like once every two weeks and I'd work with them on the speeches. And uh, I went down, I auditioned, and it went really well. It went really well. Um, and he only knew of Bristol and Rada. And Rada didn't want to know me. Like, I went in and I may as well have killed the shit out on the floor because <laughs> they were just like, yeah. they got me out the room pronto. Um, Why are you just not? To... I don't know. I was, I mean, I've got a strong accent as it is, you know, but I think back then it was like, yeah. it was indecipherable, you know. And, <laughs> um, I think that kind of went against me. But with Bristol, I think the thing with Bristol Old Vic is, is they want, they, they like characters, like, in terms of like they like character actors mm. and I think when I went in I did a speech and I think it was a, it was about a smackhead who was like it was, a, it was a heavy speech like, like <laughs> slash as a kid and I did it like really like naturally and quite convincingly and they were like and then I did a Shakespeare and it went really well and I went home and I got my rejection from Rada and I got a letter through the post off Bristol saying come in for the recall so I was like oh, alright so we went down to Bristol and they used to do like, something called like uh, a recall weekend but I think it was a day or two when you'd just go in and you'd get essentially a, a, a taste of what it was like to be a student and it's quite military actually mm. obviously not as intense but you, you'd have to be in at eight half eight and then you'd be there till seven and it was just non-stop oh, I was moving it's a long day, yeah. and it was yeah. like and you know if you did something wrong they'd be like they'd tell you and it's like you know the thing is with acting it's a lot it's disheartening isn't it it's, yeah and it's confidence man yeah, yeah. the best actors are the, I feel a lot of the times are the ones who've got the most conviction in what they're doing I it's, think good, it's good sorry mate it's good for you as well going in as the as an older because you realise how probably how hard it is whereas yeah. if you're 18 you think yeah I'll fucking go to this college oh, yeah. I'll be to Capri after two years be, all the big films will be knocking on my door whereas do you take it more do seriously, that, don't you? Do you think that did help you then? It, it did and it didn't because I was <laughs> I was 25, right? And also, I, lo- I, I like the bevy. <laughs> I love the bevy. I, like, and prior to going to drama school, I was at the match every week and I was travelling around in Liverpool, so I was always, I was just, I was on a whale of a time. But I kind of, I did me knee and I used to be pretty fit. And I've, I've got my fitness back now, like, but I used to be pretty fit, but... 
I weren't happy, so I was just drinking a lot and I was eating shite. I was in the chippy twice a day kind of thing, you know. The next thing I've blown it's like 14 stone. Really? Yeah, yeah man. I can't I've got, I've got the pictures. Stone. Show me them later, man. I was fucking, I was a big kid. <laughs> and I had a big cat wig as well, so I looked, I looked mad and um, I ballooned and I ended up at drama school, 25, in a, a room full of 18 year olds. There was another girl who was 26, so that was, that was helpful, but Everyone was 18 and, like, they're good-looking. And I was just, like, 25. <laughs> spoke with what to them must have felt like a foreign language and overweight. And I just really struggled to settle in because I was like, oh, I'm not like these people. I'm not. Mm. And... Um, were they were they big characters as in, like, what you What I have in my head is people go to acting college. Is that yeah. do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, they, they were like... They, do you know what? They were all lovely. They yeah. were, like, sounds and... Some of them to this day I'm, I'm brilliant mates with. And after the first term, the first 11 weeks was horrendous. But after that, it was fine. It was like, we were like, it's it's weird. And I, I don't know whether it's like this in the military, but you you kind of think, this is horrible. <laughs> but but we're in it together. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like, and at that point, the, you know, we argued like fuck. And there was times where... I genuinely, I'm surprised people didn't come to blows and stuff like that. Mm. But in the main, particularly with the, the lads in my group, who were in my group, we're all pretty, we're all still in such. I, I think I spoke to three of them this week. You know what I mean? Mm. We all live dotted all around London. And I think one of the lads is in Bristol. So he's, he's gone back to Bristol now. He's doing well, but it's, so we're, we're all in such, but, mm. and it's it just, yeah, it was, it, I think it was hard in that. It was hard in the social aspect. Essentially, mm. like short, short, the short answer is it was hard in the social <laughs> aspect, but it was good in that I was like, because this is the other thing, like I had no money when I went there, um, so I was only entitled to two years to youth and funding. So the first year, I was able to get, I think I got a five grand loan, which was you know, which kind of covered it. But I think my fees at that time they were like three and a half grand. So I had to pay my fees and then I had to pay for my accommodation and all my books and everything like that. And I got there and I took my student loan company letter and I gave it to the girl. She was like, um, this, this, isn't, this isn't finished. And I was like, what? And she's like, no, yeah, yeah you, 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 you need to speak to them. So anyway, I ring them and they were like, yeah, you get two years. So I was like panicking. I was like, fucking hell. Because oh, I'm, I'm jumping ahead here. I got knocked back the first time. I got knocked back from Bristol the first time, but he said, come back next year. And I was like, all right, so I'll come back. I went back and I got in. So, um, but they kind of, so I had to get a job while I was training, which no one really in our class had to do. So I'd work eight till seven. Are they, are they all from, sounds a bit thingy, are they all from not our type of backgrounds? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, they're trying to change it now. And this isn't just Bristol, like drama schools now, they're on it in terms of like, they can't all be posh. Yeah. But when I went through it all, I know I should have just you said know, our, our type of yeah, but, and I said, yeah, actually, actually that's unfair that they were all posh because they weren't they, they were the fucking wealthy my, though they were all... wealthy I'm probably wealthier than I was yeah yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm almost certainly in fact but not everyone you know and as, as we said before you never know the ins and outs of people's no, circumstances no. do you but it was um, it was just a very difficult thing for me because I'd have to as I say it was 8 till 7 and then I'd run upstairs, throw a lasagna in the microwave, throw that down my neck, and then I'd be working at a pub about four miles away until, like, midnight, one o'clock, and this is every day. Fuck you know what I mean? So it was, like, it was hard in that, in that respect. just to make ends meet. That's not, yeah. like, you know, you, yeah. you're going to be balling at the end of the month. That's just, like, to make ends meet. That's it, that's it. And it was, like, that was the first year. <clears throat> um, after the first year, it was fine because I got the full... I got like full funding so mm. I could live a bit more comfortably and you know kind of live not I mean that's drama school it's not a student's existence as in like you're like, having pot noodles every night and you're on the aisle you can't because you're, you're always at it you're always you're always grafting with, but, with that mate and go back to what you were saying mm. before earlier with Tom about I think that had knocked my confidence a lot in the sense of because it's an art you know if I'm getting taught how to take a machine gun apart and put it back together the first time you shit at it you miss a bit out and you, know, you practice and you practice and you get drilled on it till eventually you do it and there's only there's a right way or there's a wrong way yeah. at the end it either works or it doesn't with art it's all about opinions and about 
you know, what, 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 well, I thought you could have done this better or that better. When you're kind of going through that and confidence must get knocked a lot because you're thinking, right, I've smashed that then. And then they're like, well, you know, I want you to be more of this or less of that next time. Yeah. In the Marines, it's black and white. You're either... It either fires when you put it back together. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. I think acting at for, for somebody who's quite a confidence per, confident person, I think I'd struggle with thinking I've done well and someone going, oh, I'm just fucking shite. Oh yeah, because there's there's nothing worse in the world than that. Because like there was times where I think I'd, I've smashed that, and I'm, I probably did, I probably did. But then I get the feedback, and someone would say, you missed your. Your, your RP, you, you missed you missed this dip thong, you know, and I'd be like, uh, uh, and you, you know, we fucking plummet mm. to the floor. Mm. <clears throat> but and I think it's, but in a way, that is good because I think it, it's, it's good because it always makes you strive to do the best that mm. you can do. Um, you know, there's nothing worse is there really than like overpraising someone and they're doing a shit job. Yeah, you exactly. Know? Yeah. I, I think <clears throat> like, but, do you think you can teach, obviously you can teach acting, but do you think there's an element where, obviously you've got to be naturally gifted, haven't you? Yeah. But do, do you think during those two, three years, however long it was, do, you know, do you feel like you, you can teach acting, I suppose, is the question I'm trying to get at? I think, I think you can improve people, definitely. There was people on my course who, when I started, I didn't, I didn't think they were very good. But by the end, I was like, they're great. Do, do you know what I mean? Mm. Because you... You kind of see the developments in people, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And I'm sure people used to think that about me, you know. I but I think I think you can see it. Too. I think, but I think with acting, like, I think a lot of it's about suggestion. You know, I think if you just leave, leave if someone's half decent and you leave them to their instincts and just make a suggestion, why don't you try this? You can try it, and it might be shit. And if it's shit, they can do it the other. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's all yeah. about. I, I, I feel like a lot of it's trial and error but um, I think I, for me like where the conviction is at the heart of it if, you convi- if you've got that conviction even if someone tells you shit you can improve on what they've told you mm. but you can also go well actually I feel like I've got something to say and I feel like there's something honest about what I'm trying to do here and if I think if, you, if you've got that kind of righteousness about it about you you're all right. You're, I mean, I mean. To be fair, there's gonna be people who think I'm a shit actor. That's sad, but but I, but I don't. I, I I'll back myself. You know mm. what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Um, Do yeah. you think those two? Years, so how how long was it again? Sorry, I left uh, 2013. So I've been out seven years in July. Right. Yeah. But how how long was the course? Sorry, three three so years. I applied for the two years, but decided right, yeah, you, yeah. need, you need. Like, Do you, you think then, if you if if during those three years you'd have had acting jobs as such mm-hmm. you know in different sets that sort of thing versus the acting college yeah which do you think would have met would have made you better oh that's interesting that because some of the best actors out there haven't trained really i think yeah 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 some of the some of the like there's some brilliant ones out there that never went to didn't go to drama school route really? um yeah. i mean i, I say that was a given that you can't have to no man no there's some brilliant i know i know people from liverpool who who were brilliant and they never went to drama school. Like, what about like uh, obviously my Stephen Graham? Steve, thing. I think Stevie went. I he think, went. Yeah, yeah. I did he? To a thing with him the other yeah, day. yeah, he went. Um, but and he's phenomenal. Like, yeah. but I, but I also believe that if Stephen hadn't gone to drama school, he'd still be brilliant because yeah. he's, yeah. he's so so gifted. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's kind of that thing, isn't it? You go to college. And learn how to be an electrician or do you, do you, yeah, do you, you be an apprenticeship type yeah, thing and you're it. doing it on site. But as we said before, you do something yeah. like the 10,000 dollar kind of enough. thing, yeah, yeah, you'll get, you'll, you'll it, get yeah. there. And um, have you seen that film, Joe Joe Rabbit? No. no. I mean, that's fucking brilliant, you know. It's like, it's, it's, a, it's a satire, it's about, what is it about? It's about, I think it's France. France in like the Second World War. Joe and, Joe Rabbit. Yeah, yeah. And that basically, the Nazis are occupying this town. Oh, this sounds like a cracking and film already. <laughs> it's, it's and there's this little lad, and he lives with his ma, and you know he's but this kid, he's in the Hitler Youth, right? And he wakes up one day and he finds that his mum is hiding a Jewish girl under the stairs to protect her from the Gestapo, and it's like this, uh... yeah, it's it's like it's absolutely brilliant. And the kid, how old is it? This kid, yeah, 
That kid is absolutely fucking astonishing. He is <laughs> so funny. That's what I mean. He won't. He's, he's not had twenty years. Exactly, to ask him. Man. Yeah, he's just and an it's, absolute, it's instinct. Yeah. It's instinct, and but also with that in mind, like he's got to have. I think you've got to have. You've got to have the opportunities to do it. Yeah, 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 definitely. And yeah. it's like well, what you said before, mate. Struck is even me with the public speaking. I mean, you know, I back like you. I'm confident. I back myself. But no one's ever taught me how to kind of get up on stage, and yet mm. fa- you've you've kind of worked, and you think and that'll work next time. Or and, you, and sometimes when I've got feedback and I've said to people, "What do you think I should talk more about or less about?" You kind of get a feeling, don't you? Where you think, "Nah, you know, I'm onto something here," and you mm. and you kind of bow with it a bit, don't you? That's it. Yeah, you do. And you kind of like. I think it was when. It, it's like when people said to me, you should go to drama school. I don't know, that's not for me. But when, I, but I feel like that stuck with me because mm. it, you know what I said? Like I was made redundant. I was like, what, what else What else can I do really? Mm. You know, and I think that gave me that belief because it's, I mean, I, I, I don't know. There, there are things I'm, I was probably better at than acting and, you know, I'm a job and actor. I'm never going to, I, I mean, I, I sincerely doubt I'll ever like make big waves or in it or anything like that but that's sad that's sad it doesn't mean why do, why do you think that it, it's just this, it's just such a circumstantial mm. uh, industry and um, right place right time or yeah, not yeah yeah definitely definitely and, but that's but again it's like <clears throat> that's not to say people who are working don't deserve it because they, they do mm. you can't you're not going to be shit on that work you know mm. what I mean <laughs> but there are a lot of brilliant actors out there yeah. that just don't work because it's it's oversaturated as an industry. Yeah. You, yeah, you yeah. think about it, mate, that how, and I know a lot of these examples, it, it's a poor example in the sense that they've went on and done bigger and better things and stuff, but the, the amount of actors that when, I think it was, uh, I think it was on like the Graham Norton show or something, they were talking about actors who've turned down certain jobs. Yeah, yeah. And some of them, and you think, all right, it worked out all right for them. Mm. But I, I think, yeah, I think Will Smith turned down to do The Matrix, I think it was, and he'd done uh, The Wild Wild West instead. <laughs> You know, that shit film, I'm like, yeah, man. That, that was fucking crap. <laughs> he t- whether, well, I don't know whether it was The Matrix or it was something brilliant. Yeah. Now, imagine if he'd turned that down and never got another, like, big thing again. That's it, that's it. Do you know, you... Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. That could have been his, like, make or break. Do you know what, mate? It's interesting, because when, when, in my first year out of drama school, because I, I I'm dead naive to the old thing. I was 28, and I was in a rough spot, because I just split up with my missus at the time, and... It was around the time when I started writing seconds out. And I was just a bit like, I'd been in a big pit. I'd been in a big old dark place. And I got this job on the BBC. And it was a, I think it was a five month job. And I had two lines, I think in the entire five months. Of <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, man. And it was like, so effectively, I was an extra with lines. Mm. And I was like, but I'm not asked. Because some of the, some of the, the cast was phenomenal. And it was actors I knew I'd be around every day and I was just like, I'm just going to watch everything they do. Mm. Everything they do. And I did. And it was a lovely experience. And then... That's such great for you though, mate, to have that yeah. humble attitude mm. to think, you know, I'm just going to surround myself by these people and, and I'll learn a lot. Yeah, man. But it was... And I did. I did. But... <laughs> but... And here's the flip side of this. I then... Around that time, I auditioned for something which was on the BBC. A lead role. Yeah. And I smashed the audition. And I didn't get it. And I was like, and he'd gone with someone who was like on a big TV show elsewhere. And I was like, that's sad, you know. And I just put it to the back of my head. And then I get a call off my agents. And they offered me a, a smaller part in it. And they were like, it's two months abroad. Um, and I was like, okay. So I read the script and I can't find the character. You know, that the because obviously I had already had the scripts because I'd auditioned before. And I was like, hey, I can't, I can't see the character here. And she was like, oh, so she rings them back and they say to me agents at the time, well, um, all of the, all this character is going to be mainly improvised, the stuff he does. He will have dialogue, but it won't be guaranteed. Now at this time, I was also waiting to hear back on a feature film which I'd auditioned for and I think it was down to the last two. But again, they went with someone who'd been in another big TV show, so I didn't get that. But when they offered me that job abroad, I said no. Because I said, I'm not willing to go abroad for months Two, and yeah, not yeah. know that I'm going to say anything. I don't want to mm. just be, I don't want to be an extra. I want to be an actor. <laughs> now, that show 
went on and it's still running now, you know what oh, I mean? No. <laughs> and they've used the same cast, so I could have had a regular job there every mm. year. What was, what was the show? Um, do you know what? I'm not going to say because I don't know if I'm allowed to. Oh, right. <laughs> but I'll tell you later. Oh, right, I'll yeah, tell you yeah, later, yeah, but yeah. I don't want it. But, yeah, yeah, fair um, enough. It's, it's mad all yeah. those hindsight stories, isn't it? You think? That's it, man. That's it. But it was like, that would have sorted me out for the last four or five years, mm-hmm. that money wise. But I turned it down. Mm-hmm. And it was probably the worst thing I did because after I turned that down, I didn't work for as an actor for seven, eight months. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, you know, I was. I, I had to find way. I was living in London. I was. I'd only just arrived in London. I was like, "Fucking hell, okay, here we go. Start again. Got to find a job." So next thing, I, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm working <laughs> nine to five. You know, and I'm like, "Oh, where's the next job coming from?" That and must I, be hard. That must because not only are you wanting to like focus on your craft as such, mm. but like you are you're constantly trying to like have to find work. Oh, it consumes like, you, mate. Yeah, but it does. It consumes you, and it's not. I feel like. Actors are known to like suffer with mental health issues, and I think that's part of the reason mm. because there's so much anxiety about what's next. And also, man, I mean, like I see it all the time. People say talk about failed actors, and I think it's the worst statements you can ever say because there's no such thing as a failed actor. Mm. There's lucky actors. There's no fucking failed actors <laughs> because I, I mean I think the statistics like ninety eight percent of actors are out of work at any one time. Mm. Really? Yeah. That high? That's how, that's how high it is. So you can't really say anyone's a failed actor because no. we've got to live, haven't we? Yeah. yeah you yeah. know? Yeah, it was yeah. one of the most humbling experiences I had. I was dating a girl in London um, and she was a dancer. Mm. And it's the same kind of sketch, you know, going to dance auditions all the time. And then sometimes, yes, yeah, she's great for the part, but she's too she's too small or she's got the wrong colour hair or she's this or she's that. And she, she was working in Harrods as like a, a perfume girl, you know, walking past and yeah. praying. And I go down, I'd spend a few days there with her at a time and she fucking grafting her ass off in Harrods all day standing there, you know, people just walking past her and, you know, self-esteem, she feels like shit. Then she's running home, getting changed, going to these classes, auditions and spending a fortune to, to go to classes to train, to then go to auditions and, and it doesn't work out and then you come back and then, you know, a week's gone and you've got to do it all again. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. that resolve and that resilience you must need, it was... You know, just to, yeah, it was yeah. amazing to see the heart. I've never met anyone as hard working. No, it was amazing. Just on that, and, and I'm not trying to make a joke of this, but you can see how people like Harvey Weinstein, yeah. you know, if 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 <laughs> you know if Harvey Weinstein yeah, said yeah. Do you want a fucking <clears throat> role in that, you know, yeah, man, hundred percent, yeah, it, that's it. It's it's like a cruel world. It was people with power because I'd do it, that. fucking hundred yeah. percent. <laughs> that's it. But there's a lot of pressure on people, and it's sad, man, because people take advantage of that. I, yeah. If you think about it. I, I mean, no one's ever took advantage of me like that, but I, I mean, I feel like there's a lot of status and power play, okay, uh, like power play going on in that industry because mm. if you die it up, you're out, you always know people are going to like mm. be out for you. So. E- e- even that, where uh, I've got a friend who's an actor and he said, uh, his agent said to him, get on social media because sometimes like, Casting people will go, oh, well, he's not as well known because I'm guessing casting mm-hmm. and producers and directors are going to want you to say, right, you've been in this, Robbie Stapp, you know, you've got, a, mil- no you've got a million followers or something, half a million, you know, you. So, and if someone's like, listen, I don't like social media, I don't want to do it. Yeah, yeah. And, and there's another guy there who's got a million followers and, and they're both, you know, in line for the lead. The director will be thinking, well, he's got more power. He's got a million more people who can watch the project that mm. we're going to work on. I, do you know what, mate? That's interesting, that, because I think, like, like, social media is, in some ways, as an actor, one of the worst things, because you constantly see what other people are doing as well. Do you, mm. do you know what I mean? You can't switch off. You see stuff like that, and you go, fucking hell, there's no point, because yeah. they're getting all the jobs. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's hard, but... I wouldn't be surprised if my social media has cost me a fucking job or two. <laughs> so I do swear and talk about football. Like, if Liverpool are on and I'm watching in my flat, I'm like, ah, oh, there's shit. Oh, you know, you say that, don't you? But I've, I've thought that with my with my, my one for yeah. me speaking and, <clears throat> and stuff. But cause I, it's either made, made similar, my football with a beer in my hand, mm. my daughter or my dog. It's probably like the four big things. But I've yeah. turned up at gigs. I've done a big gig last week for Phillips. And... Uh, they bought me, me little girl a toothbrush. They like, oh, we see it all the time, posting oh. about Alba, you know, where's a little gift for Alba? And it's happened a few times where people have bought it, like, went into schools and they've got it, so... That's boss, that. I don't, yeah, it was amazing. I don't think it's... 
don't get me wrong if you mm. every two weeks you, you fuck this fuck that yeah. maybe that's not great but I mean I, I think it's nice to have that balance of your personal life and also the, the projects that you're working on I, I, I mean yeah I, I think with seconds out it's been brilliant for me in that respect because I've been able to to spread the word about it mm. in a way it probably wouldn't have been you know 10 years and, ago and do you think with that seconds out where you've just detailed your journey there yeah do you think all that give you not not so much the way confidence is the wrong one but I mean give you the the foundations to think you know what I want to make a project you know the work's not as kind of forthcoming as mm. I thought it might be and also I've got this experience do you think that was a kind of bit of a cauldron of yeah now's the time to maybe do something Um. yeah I think so I think I got out of drama school and I was kind of I had, I had that the idea in my head for a while Oh, really? as, yeah, yeah I, I said, as I said, like I'd gone through <laughs> a pretty dark point at the back end of drama school. There was a lot of shit going down, and it plunged me into a place I hadn't been for a while. Um, and I got hooked up with a counsellor. The 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 like the the school said we we recommend you go and see a counsellor. So I went to see a counsellor, and. The counsellor was a, a woman I knew, and she's she's since le- she's since passed away, and she was just a lovely woman. And she just said, "Robbie, down like she's like down. I think I think you're depressed. I think you have been for a long time. I think you need to go and speak to someone. And I, you know me, so I don't want you to speak to me. I want you to go and speak to a man who you don't know. So she said, "I'm gonna have a look around," and she she did, and she she put me in touch with this fella in Bristol. Hey, that was daunting. Oh, it was, man, because I was like. I feel like I'd always felt an anxiety and there'd been moments where I was just like, but it was the first time someone had actually looked me in the eye and said, I think you're depressed. Um, and even that didn't shake me out of it because I think like up until three years ago, I was kind of in denial about it. I reckon. Um, but I spoke to my mate, John, we were doing, when we were doing Little Boy Blue and he kind of said it to me. I said, he was like, lad, I think you, you're depressed. And I was like, no, no. But, Someone had told me prior that, you know, a professional had actually told me that I was, mm. but I still denied it. Do you, do you know what I mean? It was just a fucking weird, <laughs> weird thing. And But I went to, I, I went to see a counsellor when I was at drama school and he was able to give me the space to, to speak about things that had always bugged me since I was a little lad. And um, just to really like, to voice them and to make sense of them. I think a lot of things happened earlier on in my life which I blame myself for. And I was like, and then when you, and then he was like, and then when I couldn't blame myself no longer, I blamed other people. And what that, but so going to speak to this therapist, what it gave me, it gave me like the kind of the space to actually look at things objectively. And a, realised that the way I felt about things wasn't my fault, but also that the people that I blame for things, they've not necessarily done the things they've done because they were they were monsters or anything like that. Do you, do you know what I mean? Mm. And, and that was dead helpful. And um, I think I, I seen this fella in Bristol, Chris, for about six months. And then when I moved to London, he Skyped me a few times when we did we did a few Skype sessions. And that, and then, like, that was it. And the school, as I say, the Bristol Old Vic, the drama school I was at, they were brilliant because I was in a bad place and they helped me out. Do you think it did help you then? Yeah, it did because I still, I'm not, I mean, I still have my moments. I haven't, lately I've been a bit low, I'm not going to lie. I've been, I've been pretty, it's been, yeah, it's been pretty grim recently. But what, doing those therapy sessions did is a gate as I say it just gave me the space and he, he did you know the <clears> mad <throat> thing in that therapy you know the the most profound thing he said to me he was just like he was like, just just breathe and I was like just, just take a breath and I was like I, and, and, and I was like fucking I'm not breathing <laughs> <laughs> I went mean, because I was just so bound up and I think now sometimes if I'm like feeling really you know, if I'm if I'm feeling on sense yeah. sort of feel highly strong, I'll take that breath, mm. and that breath helps, and it's good, man. I've got an Apple Watch, yeah, and yeah. every hour it tells me. I mean, it just it comes with it. It says breathe for a minute. Really? Does yeah, it? yeah, it's good. Like, I didn't even have to install it. It was just there. But 
when he said that, it was like, oh, okay. And that's and the more I think about it, it's a coping mechanism. It mm. helps. It just mm. it just grounds you. It just makes you go, okay. Mm. There's the problem. But here's me. Do you, do you know what I mean? Yeah, it, yeah. it removes me from it a bit. But it doesn't help as well if you if you are because, like you said, ninety eight percent of actors are. Yeah. You know when that when you're trying to find work as well and you haven't got a, like an mm. aim or a, like a project or anything like that that yeah. that must be hard it is it's really hard you, you imagine all right like back in the day when before social media when it's just newspapers and you were an actor and you walked to your shop and it was like um there's someone who's going for a part or again like an, an actor yeah. who's a bit, bit like your rival a bit type thing you're always kind of yeah. getting cast up for the same thing and you go to the shop in the morning and you go to the pick up a paper and it's this actor on coronations, whatever it may mm. be, whatever film it is, and you're like, oh, oh fucking hell, they've got the part. Mm. Once you put the paper down, you walk home. That's it. Then, like, it won't really be a thing then again because you yeah. won't see the paper the next. Now, it's every time you look on your phone. Yeah, man. It's <laughs> That's it. Different, isn't it? Like, it's. Yeah, fucking... yeah. I'm saying this to me, Mrs. Lee. Like, one second's out is circulating. I'm probably just going to get rid of my Twitter and all that. Because every time you log on, it's just like this person, this person, that person, mm. that person. And you're like, I just can't be asked. I just yeah. have like, you know, I just, it's it's just, it's like everywhere. And mm. it's like, if you've got a nine to five, you do your nine to five and all being well, you'll finish work, you'll go home and you can chill out. But if you're like, you know, say, say you've had a bad audition and then you go home and you log on Twitter and you see mm. this, this or this, it's just, it's all consuming. All consuming, yeah. yeah. But, can, I, can I just, what you mentioned about um, auditions, what, yeah. what is it like, so going for an audition, do is it a real like the other people on the other side who are obviously you know um it's their decision yeah do they know they've got the big they've got obviously got the power here do they do they treat you like shit do they not are they quite good or? do you know what mates in the main 90 i mean i'm i'm sure everyone has their own has got their own like tales and that 98 percent of the time i've only ever been in rooms where i've been seated with respect or people have like been conversation you know people have been nice I don't think I've ever had a really bad audition. Mm. There was one where I, I genuinely felt I was having the piss took out of me and I was fucking fuming. I was <laughs> on the agent and I was like, that cheeky bastard. She was, and and like two days later, I got a ring. I'm like, yeah, so it's, it's between you and this guy for the job. I was like, fucking hell. <laughs> you know, I was... Glad so, you didn't snap. Exactly. I was like, I'm going to ring them. I'm going to mm. email them. And she's like, no, no don't, don't, don't do that. So, but, and thank fuck I didn't. But, um... Most of the time, it's it's been it it's been good. I I like we had to say that I like, am doing a job soon, and um, I was helping out with the auditions for that because it's all improvised. So I was improvising with the actors, and I know myself like there's there's not worse than walking into a room and feeling nervous and feeling, so intimidating. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, yeah. And it was like it's I was like I don't know. It was it was it was hard because. Be, I, I felt like there was pressure on me as well because I wanted to make sure that they were able to have the, you know, the best audition they mm. could have, and that I I could give it to, I could give them what they needed to do that. Yeah, yeah. And it was like, but also the director saying to me, "I want you to do this. I want you to be this." Do you, do, do you know what mm. I mean? And you're like, ah, it, it, it's like, yeah. But it kind of. What I do know is being on that side is every single person on that panel, they wanted the actor to be the right person. Yeah, yeah. Do, yeah. Do you know what? If they got in the room, <clears throat> they thought there was something about them that made sure that that meant that they could potentially do that job and do it well. But I know I've also found some, like, you know, that when you do go in for an audition, it's, it's, it's small details. Mm. Could, someone could be taller than you. Someone could be stockier than you. Someone could be. It's just a certain look, isn't exactly. it? Just something about them, yeah. Exactly. It's all. It's all like it's. It's. They've it's created fractional. an image in their head of exactly mm. who they want. And yeah. Then yeah. And, then and it's how it's the closest you can fit. You can fit. It's like when I always yeah. think about like the uh, the Harry Potter books when they, I always remember them casting. There was kids in my school who went for the casting for yeah. Harry Potter. Yeah. And uh, I always think the director, whoever it was, the producers. Like you've just said, then when you're reading a book, everyone's got in their head how they pictured Hogwarts and Harry Potter and mm. Hermione and all of them. Yeah. So when you see a kid, it's gonna be however you, whoever has the final say or the few, mm. it's narrowed down depending on what the view you've got of yeah, Harry Potter yeah. in your head, isn't it? Really? Yeah, yeah. It's all subjective, I guess, isn't it? It is, man. It is, and it's like 
because there was there was uproar weren't there a few years back because when they did the stage version of Harry Potter, uh, the the casts, the cast a, a black actress as Hermione, I and a lot of people that, yeah. were aging. But I was just like, but it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. You know, it's it's a fantasy. Yeah. It's it's <laughs> fictional. It's like. There's nothing to, in the books to suggest that Hermione has to be white. Mm. Do, do you know what yeah. I mean? And it's like, just let people do the part and have fun. You, yeah. you know what I mean? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. if the if the writer thinks it's right, it's fine. The director think, thinks it's fine. Mm. And the producer and good at the job. Exactly. It's, yeah. it, it is what it is. And it's like... Was yeah. that a massive then? You, um, the Harry, all the Harry Potter casting thing. Was it? Did it go around the country then and everything? Or I I guess so. so. Yeah, I remember because I'm, I'm, I'm 35 this year, and I think when I, I was in year seven, I think when the yeah, I was in primary school. Yeah, yeah and I was th- I yeah primary school. I think I can remember it because I can remember that I can remember it. Um, seeing them for the first time in the paper or something like that Sean Lavery his name was the kid who went and I remember yeah. he, got, he got like a day off school he's like he's going to go and try and be Harry Potter I was like what <laughs> 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 yeah. they're yeah. killing it now aren't isn't, they isn't, oh, it, yeah. isn't it sad though the way that some jobs and it could be acting it could be professional football it could be anything that you've now got you're not forced into mm. but you've kind of got to have a social media presence it's like oh yeah. you've you've got to do this like you're saying before, like mm. like that, that that black actress, you know, she's just good at a job. It's like she's brilliant. But now social media's got an input on it. It's like, listen, that girl might just want to be a, an actress. She's good at it, whether she's fucking black, white, fucking green, mm. doesn't matter. She's good at a job. But now, social media's got this kind of pull on it to think, oh, this pressure to be this and that. Uh, like yeah. footballers, you know, there's a pressure on them now because the sponsors, no doubt, that oh, post an Instagram thing about your new football boots. Don't get me wrong, they're probably getting paid a lot of money to do, but what happens if they're like, I, mean, I just want to play for Liverpool, I just want to play football. Mm. Fucking, I don't I don't want to do it. Yeah, yeah. Or, or like, I don't know, there's probably millions of jobs where social media is now getting, oh, just do this on social media again. Yeah, yeah. It's like, well, I fucking don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to do my job and go home. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you don't have to do that in an office job, do you? Mm, yeah. It's, uh, um, yeah, the social media thing bugs me in a big way. I used to love it at first. I used to love it because I thought it was funny, but they're all the But for this project, though, seconds out now, yeah. now that it's out, yeah. you must have seen the, the positives from it, though. Oh, oh, yeah, big time. It's it's like, I think, because the, I wrote it in 2000, the first draft, I think I wrote in 2013. And then I had to wait to get, like, I was always throwing it around, you know, to different people. And it was when I was doing Little Boy Blue, um, I passed it to Phil Barantini, who is an actor and now a director. And me and Phil had scenes together in Little Boy Blue. But I think that's a cut it down. It's like 45 minutes and our scenes, like, well, they, were, they were like, it was a whole other storyline. And uh, they cut them. So Phil didn't make the cut. But me and Phil did a few scenes and we were sat in our like, trailer one day. And he hadn't acted for a while and he was like, yeah, I, want, I really want to get into the director and all. And I was like, oh, okay. And I said, I've just written a script. I have a read of it. So I send him the script. And I, I passed it around to everyone who I met doing that job pretty much. And he, he got back to me. And he was like, I've just read your script, mate. And it was fucking, I, I think it's brilliant. He's like, can I, can I direct it? Can I be involved? And I was like, and he hadn't directed. Mm. Um, so I was like, um, I'd rather, and I'll be honest, like I, I was kind of thinking I'd rather someone who, who directed before do it and there was a theatre director in you and he was sniffing around doing it and we were going to do it together but anyway it all went sits up and I said to Phil this is like two or three two years later you, I've been to Turkey on holiday and had to think about it and he said he said to me he's like just before I went I want I really want to do it mate and I since the last the first time I asked you like nothing, nothing's happened so please just reconsider so I'd gone away and um, I had a thing I was like fuck it I'm going to do it so I rung him and said we're on and um, yeah and then we had to but the only problem was is we never had a penny we never had a we never had a, a penny between us so we were like what are we going to do um, so we we Phil pulled a few favours in terms of like kit and stuff like that but we were like, we're going to have to just fund the entire thing from the ground up. 
So we did uh, an Indiegogo, which is a crowdfunder essentially. And I think we wanted to then, I think once we tra- our target was 15 grand um, to keep everything, you know, to make sure everyone was comfortable and to make sure that. What was that 15 grand? Was that f- was that to pay people as well? Or it was, was that. Well, it was kind of to pay people, to pay people. Uh, Kit insure, insurance. Um, I didn't deal with the the actual, you know, whatever. But it would have been it, essentially from the starting points of the film, and that goes from like paying like production designers and stuff like that, through to editors and mm. all the rest of it, getting them to do it. And I remember speaking to one of the. Producers. You don't want to be one of those people who just favors everything. You, you exactly, got This is people's work. You've That's got to it. be paying. Yeah. That's it. And you know what? It was like. We didn't make that fifteen grand. We, I think, we made ten. I spoke to one of the producers on Little Boy Blue, and I said, "How much do you reckon that it cost me to make?" And he said, "I reckon about eleven, twelve grand, fifteen tops if you want to do it properly." I was like, "Okay, so that's why we budgeted for fifteen. Mm. Um, but as I say, we didn't make the fifteen, and we what we had to do two indie goal goals. We did the, in the first one, we made five grand, and our target was fifteen. Um, and in the second one, because we made the five, our target was ten, and we made five again, um, and it was months of just like. So I think how did it work? Yeah, we did five. We did. We made five grand leading into the shoot, and that paid for the shoot. And um, obviously, I I wrote it and I was in it. I played the lead, so I didn't need paying. Um, we wanted to make sure the other actors were paid, um, and it, like, and all the rest of it, and. It just kind of like paid that that's that pay for locations. I mean, I think we got we got one of the locations for nothing. We did, yeah. Trav gave it. Trav let us use the gym for nothing. Mm. So we were lucky in that respect. But then, and I think we got a, we got a massive discount on the on the kit as well. I think uh, I'm not sure how big, but film. Did you use one of the you know the running sequences? Was that the one by Aintree in Oral Park? No, that was in a, that was in Manchester in. Cause we shot the old. I wanted to shoot it in town. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I wrote the script because I was training a lot at No Limits Gym. Um, do you know? Do you know what? It's in the Baltic Triangle now. Right. I meet with I meet with Danny Widow. I've, I know Danny from the match, and um, when they opened the original gym up, it was in above the old five. Mm-hmm. Do you know where the, the, the third year where Next Gen used to be? Mm-hmm. It was just below that. That and there used to be this lift, and the way I wrote it initially was that there was a bit where he was running along Everton Brow and then you'd see him get into the lift and the lift would open up and I am I envisaged like you know like dossers at the bottom like just like like you know homeless people like like kind of like moving as he as he comes to the lift and stuff like that. But then um like no limits moved over to Baltic Triangle and it kind of made more sense for us financially to shoot it in Manchester because all the crew were from Manchester. We mm. had better access to locations there because they were from there and and then when Strav came on board as the as the coach, we um yeah, we it was it was just better off doing it there. Mm. But we were gonna shoot at Liverpool, then London, because I trained at Fitzroy Lodge in London and they we were gonna use there. But then again, it's just like it's just it's better. It's yeah. just so yeah, we ended up that was it, that was a pathway in a Manchester, I can't. I don't even know where it was. It's just mad. I've seen it. Shall I, yeah, shall I um, put the trailer on yeah, and then? Because um, I can then. And I can what was put the, it... what was the idea about the boxing? Did you box before and stuff so, like that? Or... Yeah. So like essentially, we grew up around boxing. My granddad was a coach in. Um, my granddad was a coach in Liverpool in in Halewood when mm-hmm. he was young, and he had lads who'd go to the ABAs and stuff like that and. So we, we, I was around boxing gyms when I was a kid, um, and we tra- and my teens are trained low. I never competed. Mm. I didn't compete, but I was, I was never out. Like I was always in, if I weren't playing footy, I was in the gym. Yeah. And my granddad had stopped coaching then, but one of the lads he coached that started coaching, a fella called Jed Miles, and he was in the old Bancroft Sports Centre, and they've knocked it down now. And me and RJ and Ali, my, my younger brothers, we go in. Um, I knocked her on the head. And RJ carried on, and he's coaching now. He coaches at Gemini. He coached with the the juniors with like John Dyson, Jason Flasman, and that. So, box and I think like on my nan's sides, me 
my nan's cousin like he was he was a pro but he, even though it's, it was obviously about mental health and stuff yeah. you'd always thought boxing would be the kind of the, the way out for it I yeah it, it was like I'm I'm a bo- I love boxing mm. like it's I've always loved it when I was at school I did one good thing I think and it was a it was at a presentation on boxing at Muhammad Ali when I was in year 10 <laughs> and like I'm a I, I, I feel like I'm a student so of it I like I, I, I like the history of it. Yeah. You know, the, like lineage. I, like, I love lineal championships and stuff like that. Like, you know, he was the first heavyweight champion. And, you know, do you know what he grab is? And all, and all, like, yeah, I read yeah. like loads of books when I was a kid. And I think, mate, as well, whether you've done it on purpose or not, but I think boxing's such a manly sport, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. It's such a kind of. Yeah, you just wouldn't. And speaking out about your feelings is such a not a manly thing to mm. do, according to society. But you know yourself, boxing gyms, for me, are some of the best places yeah. around to have a like to, to meet yeah. people and sh- and like get on. Mm. You know what I mean? Like I've I've never walked in a gym in my life. I never and felt some. If you graft that, if you graft, I I I feel like anyone's welcome in a gym. Me yeah. And um, I've like I just wanted to try and put that across as well because I I actually think that boxing is such a it's such a I know it's a, I know it's a combat sport and I know you can't get hurt doing it. But I think it's such a fucking therapeutic sport mm. in terms of that. If you you know you you can get a lot out of it. Do you, do you know what oh, I mean? Mate, yeah, I think as well, mate. The whole um, doing something that's that you're not good at to start with, yeah. and like being put in your place. Yeah, man. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like trying to learn something technically and being fucked from it, and getting like that kind of fucking. Hell, that was you, know, you kind of have to take a step back and go actually I've learned a lesson there yeah, about yeah. yourself yeah and then add, add to the fact of camaraderie and everything that's in it it's fucking yeah it's a special place I love it mate it's um, but it like like with with the gym I'm at now in London like some, you know you'll you'll go you'll train and you know if the coach isn't busy I'll just make you a cup of tea and li- li- literally you're out the showers a cup of tea waiting for you but and then you, that, yeah. yeah man you just have a cup of tea and have a chat and I just think it's, I just I just think they're like they're like brilliant hubs mm. in terms of like people just getting on yeah and uh, and you know the respect it, it teaches you I I know it's not a popular view but I I, I genuinely think they should teach it at school mm. because if you think about it, right? Um, I think, I, I genuinely think the minute you start to learn respect off people is the minute you say, like, you... I think one good thing, how can I wear this, right? Because I don't, I don't want to say that you've got to, someone's got to get knocked Smite. out to, like, to learn respect. Yeah. That's not true. But I just think there's something about when you box, you know, you can watch all the videos in the world, mm. you can think hard and fast and this and that. But the minute someone just even a jab doesn't mean if someone catches you with, your, with a with a good jab you know straight away mm. ah, I've been caught that didn't like you know that that I need to avoid that yeah. I need to avoid that and then someone hits you with a right hand or a left hook and it's like you know it's got a it's got a bit of a turn on it <laughs> <laughs> it hurts yeah, doesn't it yeah. and the minute you know that you can be hurt mm. the minute you respect other people and the minute you, I feel like that's when you start treating people with a bit of a bit yeah. of dignity I think like you know you see a lot of talk now about people not, you know, like young lads in particular going on, totally, like yeah, yeah. shivering and stuff like I that. I always think that, you know, when you see about the no more knives thing, it's just yeah. so you just come, you know, just come to the gym, like, and you'll soon think, fucking hell, like, get that respect of, yeah. you know, just just doing a bloody two minutes on the pad with someone. Oh, that's that's fucking, it. Fucking. It's, it's just it. the trailer, yeah, is it? Yeah, this is it, mate, yeah. Let me just. I've seen this very. We just turn the volume up here one sec, mate. I can snippet this over anyway, so if you yeah. can see it on if you're watching on YouTube then uh... I've just seen that tracky there. <laughs> when we finished shooting, me 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 and me bird went to a or me and me missus. Sorry, she batting me if you hear me say that. <laughs> <laughs> me, me me missus went up Snowden, yeah. And I just done the shoot and like you know, it was it was a lot, a lot, very taxing thing. So we go to my aunties in in a Anglesey and I said let's go let's go up Snowden we'll go up Snowden so we go up and the visibility is horrendous and Laura's like panicking she's like babe I can't breathe and I was like, <laughs> I was like you're all right you're okay so we get her up the top and it was freezing and she couldn't breathe so I had to get her one of them 
fucking silver things, you know, to, like, oh, yeah, yeah. so she didn't get like hypothermia or anything. And it's August, but it was just weird, cold and mm. whatever. So we get down and I'm getting down the mountain and I'm like, ah, oh, that was sound. That, you know, we got out of it, unfa- we got out of it, unscathed, get to the very fucking bottom, yeah. And I stand in a pothole when I'm on the phone and I stand in a pothole and my ankle just goes oh. and I roll over and my fucking snackies, which I'm wearing at the start of the trailer, are ripped to bits. I was fucking devastated. Oh, got to be a great actor, don't go climb mountains. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard snowden, isn't it? At points, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, it's there's the, two ways to go up it though, isn't it? There's like yeah, yeah. there's three, I think. There's a three. Yeah, we went and we went we went the easy way, man. The the one that's by near a lake where it's quite sm- quite a smooth, but yeah. then kind of come the down. Peak, it's it's minus, it's that's, that's the minus. That's the minus. Yeah, the there's minus three. Track, yeah. There's yeah. the there's Langollen Langollen Park. There's, there's, probably, Langollen, there's probably more to be fair. There's, there's at least three from that start point. You can yeah. go the uh, the minus track, the pig trail, and then there's the really steep one. Yeah, yeah. It's I love I love going up there. Everybody has periods of unhappiness. How are you feeling right now? I don't know, it's weird. It's like I can feel the air around me moving through me. Do you know what it's like to have a fight today? Is it important to you? Fighting. Do you think you blame yourself for what happened? Man, that's gripping that in just in a minute. You're like, yeah. fuck. Is it weird? Do you, do you mind? Do you, do you mind looking, watching it back? Do you like as in? Do you know what? It's weird because like I've now I've seen the film that many times. I don't feel like <laughs> I don't feel like that trailer shows yeah what the film's like. Weirdly, isn't that mad? I'll probably get a fucking slap off the editor. For like <laughs> but it's like, but yeah, here we go. But um, it is mad watching it back because it's compelling. I thought just that minute you're thinking fucking yeah. It wait and what's it like when when something like that's done? Mm. When you've then got a again it was following on from that you're watching it back but then you got it's going to these film festivals and, and it's getting it's getting praised and I think mm. what's it like sitting there thinking oh, no, that's fucking me that yeah man it's, that, that's nice that it's nice because I think the, like, I'm not going to lie I think when it comes to acting you know for me like awards and trophies the, 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 for, for sport the, for football you know what I mean so like <laughs> if, if people watch the film they go here's an award I always think I don't know it, it was, I, I always imagined it had been quite hollow, you know, um, but that's, that's my work. I'm not going to lie, I could, you know, I could fuck acting off at some point. You never know, do you know what I mean? I could have mm. kids and think this isn't working. Well, you've always got that now. But what I've got there in this film is a lot of people from like backgrounds like mine don't do it. I mean, I think more starting to do it, which is great. Um, but what I've got with that film is I've got something which I can say I made that. Yeah, definitely. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like if you if you if you made a cabinet, if you if you if, yeah. you, if you were a joiner and you made a nice cabinet, I made that. Do you, do you, do you know yeah. what I mean? That's mine. 100%. Like mine and Phil. Actually, it's everyone's, but that all comes from my head. Mm. What you see there on that screen, it all comes from my head. And even um, the fundraising, like even that, you know, the whole yeah, behind, yeah. before you even hit the record button, you know, all that behind as yeah, well. Such it. a, you know, there's so much work that goes in it that you forget mm. yeah. about, Not you know. only you doing it, you're on both sides of the cameras, guess, aren't you? Yeah, I mean, I think the good thing for that is like, I mean, what one thing I'm buzzing about with the seconds out is Phil who directed it. He's gone from strength to strength. Yeah. Since after that, he did the short with Stephen Graham, which was brilliant. I had a tiny bars and that. I was dead lucky to be in that. And that, that's done really well mm. too. Then he's done another short, then he's done a feature film, and now he's doing another feature. Oh. And he's my mate, mm. and he's a lovely lad. And he, he you know, he, he, he believed in me enough mm. to make it. So knowing that, 
off the back of making that he's actually gone on to have a proper career as a director mm. it's great the DOP off that Matt he was 21 when we shot that he's shooting features he's 23 now really? and it's like you know it's off the back of it it's going to the, 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 touch wood and I think actually already from what the conversations I've had with people who've seen it they it <laughs> It, it, it spoke to a lot of people already, and that's great. And because that's why I wanted to make it, I wanted to, I wanted it, to, I wanted to make something which kind of didn't patronise work and class men about men. And I don't think the film does, which is good. But also, it's give people a bit of a platform. Mm. Like I was involved with Boss Mag, you know what I mean, years ago, and I remember Danny Nicho when he started it. He used to say, "I just want to give people a platform to write," you know, and and that's mm. what it did. And then Boss Night again, you know, you see. Like, yeah. like Webster and it gave people a platform to go out and play and I think this film it gave people an opportunity to do something they haven't necessarily done before and you know they've they've, they've struck it and they've mm-hmm. um, so when but like, it's won a few awards and that's lovely. what awards has it won? It, it's won it won I think it won a best it won a like a, a, a like a, an award in at some at a, there was a film festival in Houston and it won something there that's fucking mad, yeah, that is mad. And then I won Houston. The, that's it. And it, I think it won like it won like a gold, a bronze award. I don't know. And then when it won, I I won best actor. Fucking weirdly for something. And it was like, why is it weird, man? You seem no, like, you're just like you seem like no, you're weird talking about it, man. I'd be fucking uh, no, man. Because I'd I, be sitting here going, Andy, listen, lads. I think <laughs> you're, you're too humble, man. The, but the, the thing is, is like what meant a lot to me about that is. A lot of the things I, I found with with acting up to now is like a lot of the time people get on if if they know people or you know but you know they, 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 there is there is nepotism in the game that mm. there's no two ways about that. But with that award, it was it was a film festival in LA. I don't know anyone there. I don't. Mm. Do, do you know? And they just yeah, watched the it's film. Just standing alone and it's yeah. done well. On how, how does that work then? Do you, do, do you submit it to the film festivals or do they fa- they just find it? We submit it so we get we, we speak to like people who know festivals and we we say we've made this film what festivals do you think it would be? Obviously everyone wants to get be in Cannes or Sundance or another. Sundance and stuff like yeah, that yeah. but you've got to be you've got you know it's all about taste and we were kind of like which festivals would it be um, you know would it be like good for and they give us a list I think it's done by the end of this year it'll, I think it's going to have done like 15 but so. yeah well, so. How, and, and how, so what is the set of, what is the benefit of being at a film festival then is it just because the people because f- for me I just see sometimes a lot of the times I see it at documentaries anyway oh, yeah. like Sundance yeah. you know at the, or you see on the logo you see on the poster don't you like yeah. Sundance or whatever you know and, but what's the benefit for you guys for us um, it's just Essentially, because everyone involved in Seconds Out was a first-time filmmaker, you know what I mean? That's quite cool, isn't it? Yeah, and I think for us it was kind of like, we can get it out and get kind of get some critical acclaim behind it, which we did. And then when we've got that critical acclaim, we can pass, you know. Yeah, yeah. But I think also it's like, when you go to these festivals, you never know who's watching. Like, mm. someone watches Seconds Out, you go, oh, that's, that's lit really well. Who's the DOP on that? And they'll go, Matthew Lewis. So next thing, Matt gets an email. I am at senior work on seconds out. It's it's yeah, kind yeah. of the, 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 I suppose there's a network element to it. Um, for you, mate, people will be watching that and thinking, oh, can I be great for this little idea? You, you never know, mate. You never know. I think what, there's a lot of people who've watched this who I really respect, actors and non-actors, and I think a lot of actors who whose work I think's brilliant have been very kind about what I've done in it. So mm. that's that's lovely to hear. But I think for me, the main thing is the people who it's really spoke to is my mates. And their mates. Mm. Just, like, just just uh, normal people. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they can relate. Because it's... What have you found the responses being from not not the acting world, yeah. but just like normal people? It's been it's been, better, it's been better than it's been in the acting world, man. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. It's, <laughs> if, I, I actually think, I think sometimes actors are a bit scared to like champion one another. Mm. You know what I mean? Because like, I can't do that. Cause make, you know, mate. But I, I fucking like, hate that in life. Yeah, by the way, I hate it. Mate. I hate it. <laughs> I, I hate it. Hate that. I hate it. But I, I think like a lot of the people who, who just 
don't know. I took a mate of mine, and we, we showed at Liverpool Film Festival. I won't say his name, but a mate of mine came to see it, and he watched it, and he just, he was just in tears. Yeah. And it, I don't think it's an heavy film. I think it's an opal film. Mm. But what he said was, he said to me, he said, what you're doing, what you've done with it, is you just kind of voiced something, which is a bit unspoken. It's, it's arti- you've articulated it. And um, when he said that to me, that meant more than any fucking like, mm. award. Yeah, yeah. Or when a stranger like messaged me. Like, we were at Manchester and we were at, we, the first place it was at was at Manchester Film Festival last year. And there was a fella in the audience and he's got in touch and he was like, look, I, I work in mental health and I watched your film and I just thought that it was the most, like, for, for its length, it was the most, like, on the nose thing I've seen, which I think would just be so useful. Can, can we use that? You, uh, you know, we've got to clear it with, like, whatever, but it, would you be willing to let us use it? Like, yeah, crack on. It's boss that, isn't it? That, and that's yeah. it, man, because, like, you know, you... <sighs> It's, it's creating ripples, mate. You'll never know how far those ripples exactly. go. Mm. I don't know. I don't know. It helps. Someone could be watching it right now. Do you know and what I mean? That's it. And and like, you know, it's it, it's a fucking it's a vain pursuit acting. You know what I mean? Like truth told. <laughs> and it's like <laughs> but this project, though, mate. But, it's specialist type project, though, isn't but, it? But that's it. Because what I've realised is I love acting, but it has a massive impact on me everyday life. It's not great for me mental health. You know what I mean? It's it's not great for me, for me bank accounts a lot of the time. <laughs> I've just done a job, so I'm all right at the minute. But a lot of the time, I'm just like, what am I doing? Mm. What am I doing? And I try to fill my life with, like, worthwhile things. You know, the, the, the job I do when I'm not acting, I love. I love I work with people. I work, and, I, and I know that I make a difference with them on a daily basis. And if I can make work... I think it's. I think as actors and as a, not just actors, I feel like artists generally have just got to be less vain and got to, my. I mean, obviously each their own, but I think the world would be a better place if art generally, and I don't just mean actors, was less vain, and more people think I've got a bit of a civic duty here. Mm. I've got a bit of a civic duty, you know what I mean? And I've got to like, I've got to try and make a difference as opposed to. I've got to buy, I've got to try to become famous or yeah. 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 One of my most favourite quotes and it works imperfect, what you're saying then. I once seen a quote and it said, Imagine how successful we would all be <laughs> if no one actually cared who took all the credit. That's fucking true, isn't it? How cool it's is that? True, like? man. No, you know but what I mean? Is. If everyone just thought like that, you thought, you know, I'm not gonna do this for the fucking the limelight and this and that I'm doing it because I just wanna do it because I think I'm proud of it and it's good and I get it out there. Yeah. There, that's the sole aim for doing it. Like you fucking people would be so more succe- more much more successful if everyone kinda of thought like that rather than just competing up against each other and that kind of thing. But that's it. And I that's I feel like good the good thing now is that I kind of feel like as I said to you before, I've kind of said to myself, if I'm gonna continue with this, odds are I'll be a job and actor. And that's that's it. But would you not do more Passion projects like this? I probably will, mate. I probably will. I think um, it'd be a shame to, for you to make something like that. That's been yeah. so profound and it's so many people and then go, you know what? It's but not worth acting. You, you know what? I think, I say that like, I've, this the last 12 months, work-wise, I've been busier than I've ever been. So that's that's good and, you know, such wood that'll continue. But it's like, I know that I can just go like that. Mm. I know the work can dry up like that. Do, do you know what I mean? I just, it is what it is. But it's it's essentially like a oh, fuck, I lost my train of thought there. But I think oh, what was I saying? <laughs> Your yeah, yeah. passion project, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. I think it's just yeah. I just want if we can. It's just about make. I feel like if we can kind of just make things that mean a bit more to us, we'll you know it's it's. Mm. that generally things are just going to be better for everyone mm. and yeah I, I don't know man it's like yeah I lost my train of thought there <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. Worry, mate. Yeah, yeah. sorry but yeah it's a, I'm dead proud of it I'm what, what is the thing that you'd want people to um, to come away from them what's the overriding thing you're thinking right if anyone's going to listen to this now mm. they want to follow up on it yeah 
what's the kind of thing that you'd say you'd say look go and watch it if this and that yeah. and hopefully what's the kind of go away message I think if 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 you've always felt that something's bugging you or you're not feeling yourself and you you feel like you can't I don't know you, you feel beyond hope there is hope and all you've got to do is reach out and I know that's often easier said than done but if people like me can do it and other people who you know are much more vaunted and have been through a hell of a lot more can do it we all can and they're not alone and at the top of the film and at the end you know there's there's numbers for Samaritans and that you know and not only that like I think there's a there's a link on the YouTube bit which which has got a list of like of numbers people can call mm. you know on the NHS and stuff like that um, just essentially just you're never alone mm. I, I think is my overriding message for people and and that hope thing's a big thing as well yeah. isn't it do you know what I mean if you haven't got hope do you know what I mean it's like but that's it man it's tricky that easiest thing when we made this was it to, to, that, to be the most dismal thing ever and I don't you know it's not I mean it's not easy because it's people talking about the feelings and stuff at times but it doesn't end I, I feel when I watch this I, I feel like there's hope that's what I think personally mm-hmm. And it, and it's it, so hard me being open and honest like I, I class myself as someone who is really open and honest but still I look back when I was going through some of my toughest times I was like a proper fraud I wasn't telling yeah. anyone like me even though I was like so open and honest and you know fuck me I've got a mm. I've got a book out now but for when the, the book was getting written and I was bearing my soul fucking months around it fucking life was falling apart and mm. I was just like yeah everything's fine fucking cry myself <laughs> to sleep I think it's such a brave thing to to fucking go to someone. Look, I need to fucking speak to you. I need mm. I need help here. I That's think it. it's one of the. I never had the balls to do when I when I come to do it. I fucking didn't. Have, I couldn't do it. I couldn't that, bring myself to do it. Exactly, mate. And I think that's the thing as well. When I said before about that woman looking at me and saying, "I think you're depressed," and I was like, "What if you hadn't said that to me?" Mm. Do, do, do you know what I mean? Where where does that lead? And I think it's like. It's just maybe it's just having, you know, having having the the just just being aware that everyone is fighting their mm. own battles sometimes. And, and seeing that's, what I mean, that's what's yeah. so yeah. powerful about that. What you've made is that seeing that normal lads who you know are in the gym and doing bits and but and you think fucking hell, and it's so relatable. Mm. I mean, I you know we I'm, I'm sure we all know lads who, whether it's through boxing or football or any kind of sport that, that you have struggled with with the mental health mm. um, because I think I just think everyone will at some point yeah. it's impossible not to do, yeah do you of course know? Yeah, yeah it's impossible not to it's as much it's as much of our being as our kind of you know as our physical motor health isn't it you know what I mean it's not yeah. like it's not a whole world away and it's from something it. that can yeah. change as well like get different to get better yeah. or get worse as you get older it's something it. that can it's not like a one fit all thing is it exactly man like I know for a fact since I started exercising regularly I just I, am, I feel a lot better about mm. myself but not everyone's going to be like that you could be training two or three times a day and still be mm. in a you know in an absolute hell yeah. it, doesn't, it, yeah, doesn't, yeah. it doesn't like yeah. there's no rhyme or reason and that, I think that's the other thing about the film is that like some people will say I don't take antidepressants and that's fine if it works for you mm. but I also think if a if a if a trained like professional says you probably should take antidepressants for, for this reason it's probably worth giving them a go do, do, do you know what did I mean you, did you take them or? I've never took antidepressants no, no, no. in my life no, yeah, yeah. no I haven't and, um, yeah it definitely is each to their own isn't it, it like is. it's impossible for someone to sit there and judge someone just on based on your own experiences yeah. but also as well what I do think is quite important is, is just a, a sense of routine a sense, mm-hmm. and that's oh, what, yeah. what I try to get is that when Carl's coming because the film's about Carl coping. He's coping with what's what's happened. With a lot of the time, people will make something about mental health, and it will be the run up to something, and the aftermath will just be chaos. Mm. I think what you see in our film is is a young man coping with an ailment, mm. and you see him doing that. And now he he tries to pieces routine around what is going on in his life. So he's got to make weight, but 
you know, these tablets might make me put weight on, but what do I fucking do? I can try and see what happens. Do you know what I mean? Mm. It's like, that's the routine of it. I feel like that can be important. So I, I remember like getting like really being like quite low and then I was like, I just remember like I, I went, I got up one morning, went to the gym and I, I went home, I had a kip and I was like, I'm going to go back to the gym. And before I know it, that's my routine. I'm in the gym twice a week, twice mm. a day for three months and I feel great. Mm. And it's that I've just created the routine. Having that routine, stuff. yeah. I think yeah. even as well, having set set times you go to bed and wake up as that's well. It. it can be rather, as simple as that. Yeah, rather than, you know, some some people, are, you know, sleep through the that's night it. and then get up at like midday and then, do you know what I mean? But yeah. having that wake up at seven, go to bed at 10, mm. that like routine. Mm. Carrie, Carragher said it, didn't he? On how it, like, He tries to fill, fill his diary yeah. when, he, when he retired. Mm. just to fill his diary just so that you know you don't I imagine your brain starts wondering a little mm. doesn't it you know and you, 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 your well, routine it's, slacks it's hard as an actor though because there isn't always that routine is there no and that's it and that's why I said before about I like doing things where I feel like I'm making a bit of a difference mm. do you know what I mean because I just I, just, I don't want to I, I date to I don't know like I, I have got good mates who are actors like really good mates but I really value my friendships with people who aren't because mm. it's like you know and they'll they'll take the piss out of me for it you know I love it I love it when <laughs> people take the piss out of me for it because it's like there's nothing serious about it sometimes you'll see like uh, someone else who's an actor who's a mate like oh this was my struggle whereas when you, see, <laughs> you know when you see your mates it's like fucking hell you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Scalpacino it's old Jono from Boss Mag he no. calls me Scal Pacino. He used to anyway. <laughs> but um, you know, in you know, when um, and, and and I know this bugs you as well. But you know, when you're going for a job, yeah, would you ever do work for free? Because I know you have this opinion of you know. There was a guy who sent you a LinkedIn, didn't he? he said um, a times, good, yeah. there's a few times, isn't there? Mm. The only reason I asked that is because I know on Wolf of Wall Street, I can't who who plays. DiCaprio's mate. Oh yeah, uh, Joan Hill. Joan Hill. Yeah, yeah. He 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 was on a massively reduced fee just because he really wanted to work yeah, with. Um, uh, what, uh, uh, um, um, Scorsese. Scorsese. Mm. Yeah. Would yeah. you ever work for free? Um, I mean, I did this, uh, but I did this for nothing. Yeah, yeah, I suppose you. Yeah. Um, yeah. but it's it was my thing, you know what I mean. So it was. It I suppose it's like a, again it's similar to when I do stuff for free it's like mm. if, if it's something you're passionate about yeah. or something you're keen on you probably would wouldn't that's you it. that's it if, it, if I Scorsese think that's came it. knocking of course you would you know what I mean, <laughs> but the thing is though we, it, that, but that's the irony I think a lot of the time you'd always know your you vibe like because the thing is with someone like Scorsese he might have done a reduced fee but he'll, he'll still he'll have got a decent wedge for it still do you know yeah, I think he got yeah. 70 grand yeah I mean Which, yeah. Hell, you know, <laughs> yeah, whereas yeah. if like I don't it, know much to cap you if, with. If it was a young filmmaker and they said, here's a script, I really would love you to do it. Mm. But I've got no money. And I loved the script and I thought you would, you know, they had a good vibe or whatever. Mm. Yeah, I'd do that for free. But yeah, I've like, got to be careful. I've got to be careful. Yeah. I, have, I, I remember doing something for not once to help someone else and, and it was shite. <laughs> and I hope it never sees... It was yeah. a studio film and I hope it never sees the light of day. Yeah. But... It was such an interest that, on that, yeah. That was it. Uh, Joe Neal revealed in an interview that he made only 60000 on the film, the lowest possible sag after oh, yeah, rate. That's What's that? So basically, in the States, it's the Screen Actors Guild. Um, I don't know what the second best stands for, but in, in the UK, we've got equity. So, but and it, all actors are a part of it. It's different. We're not as bound up. It's in, in the UK, we're not as bound to our union as the States. If you're in the States, like... The rate is the rate, and you will never be paid lower. People find leeway in the UK sometimes. So if you do a job, I think that if you do a theatre job, I think it's like I fucking hell, I think it's like four twenty a week minimum. It's got to be by law, but some people get really? around it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Oh. Yeah, man. It's it's good that they set them. I suppose, isn't it? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, but again, it's like it's the arts generally. There's no. There's just there's there's a lack of money floating around. Yeah, that's the that's the problem. Which is and such a shame because yeah. I fucking love comedy. Just I love another water. Theater. Yeah, I go love ahead, lad. Mad. Thank you. I love you know any of those kind of you know when you you going out on a date. Yeah, yeah. Just the, like I love it all like the theater comedy. Just listen to live bands, singers. It's it's but it's quite interesting because it's not. I understand it in, to an extent because 
it's not an actual tangible. It's not something uh, we see it, don't we? We don't like it's not like this microphone. Like I'm not gonna look at this microphone and think, well, this was made that for not an Avdi. But I think cheers, mate. I feel like when you when you watch a film, it doesn't look like hard work, does it? Because mm. you kind of the glitz and the glamour of it all. You kind of think, yeah, yeah. you kind of think, well, it's easy. And I mean, there are obviously harder jobs in the world. Yeah, but yeah. But it it's like it's not as e- it's not as easy or as glamorous as it. But I always think you're not paying for that, though, are you? Like, mm. when you see someone kick a ball for 90 minutes, you're not paying for that. You're paying for the years and years and years it took to perfect how to kick that it, ball. Man. Yeah, yeah. That's it. And how to deliver that one line at the end. That's it. And I had, I had that. a thing with someone, I think I might have mentioned this ages ago, someone from Merseyside Police got in touch with me. Um, it wasn't Merseyside Police as such, it was someone who, like, an officer for them or something. And she went, oh, you'd be great to come in and speak. And I said, oh, yeah. I said, I'll just... Do the same rate as I've done for, for Cheshire Fire Brigade. Yeah. Both being blue light services. She gave me price and she went, oh, she went, oh, bloody hell, I wish I could charge that an hour. And I was like, well, you fucking go and get blown up <laughs> and then lose a leg and then fucking climb mountains and break records and then, you know, fucking, <laughs> then come back to me. Yeah. yeah. Like, I didn't just say, no, I'm going to charge this much. It was like, I've done all this yeah. and I kind of value what I do and what I've been through and what I can deliver. Mm. And I've put a price on it. With kind of looking at the market, looking looking at competition, and feeling what I can deliver, and she was just like fucking hell, it's only an hour's work. But I was like, but it's not just an hour's work, is it? It's like fucking it's yeah, a ten yeah, year yeah. journey that yeah, I've exactly. condensed into this. And you know, that's the other thing, innit? Would you go to a stranger in the street and say, "I need someone to move my fucking my cabinet"? Can you do it? It's only an hour. You wouldn't, would you? You, yeah. you wouldn't do it. Like an hour as well. It's you, not like it's, just, it's, it's an hour. It's yeah. not like it's not like ah, do us a favour, love. Pick that fucking bag up for me. It's like <laughs> go go to a place out of your well, way. Well, it's always over an hour, so it wouldn't even be that. It'd be like, all right, mate, I've just got to um, sort this fish tank out for yeah. us, making you come in. It only take about two and a half hours. The fella would be like, fuck, I'm fucking going home, mate. Like, <laughs> shit, you know what I mean? Random fella on the street. So good though that you are, you have that attitude though, because I think especially when you're first starting out, it must be so easy to just go, oh yeah. You know, people go, yeah, but it could lead to so many different things. Yeah. You know what I mean? Don't get me wrong. When I first started off, there was certain things that I'd done, but it wasn't so much for other people's benefit. It was for my own, mm-hmm. like, confidence. I'd go and speak at places, but it'd be like, I know I'm getting out of something out of this. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I feel like I'm gaining confidence. I'm, I'm trying out new material and stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? And yeah, I know, yeah, it, yeah. It wasn't like... It really puts it, it... The way the way that you really understand it is when you do say, look, I tell you what, let me call my mortgage company and yeah. ask them... Mm. you know for ex- free exposure I, I so on, on Twitter the other day someone gave a similar response someone said can you come and I'm putting on this gig can you come and speak at it uh, but unfortunately all the funds have now been spent and then the guy replied what do you do for a living and he said I'm a painter and decorator mm-hmm. and he said can you come and paint me out for me yeah, I'm <laughs> I'm for not, and, I'm, and then the fellow was like this isn't the same thing and he went it's exactly the same thing <laughs> It's true, though, I it? saw that. Yeah, it was good, wasn't yeah. it? What, what's your um, as, as an actor then? What's your favourite film? Oh fucking hell! Um, That's one of my more for watch. He's on there. It's, it's a from, cracker, isn't he? Yeah. He's, he's a master, isn't he? He's, he's a, yeah, yeah. The Irishman. Yeah. Oh fucking hell, man! I liked it. I didn't, I, I've, I've, I've heard I mixed, mixed reviews about. I that. loved it. Yeah. I loved it. I, thought, I, loved I did it. enjoy it. I didn't l- absolutely love yeah. it. Like it's like a proper old Scorsese yeah. film, and and also I just. Like every time I see Stephen Graham on the screen, I'm just like, fuck, he's, he's just boss, I get that, he? yeah. He's just <laughs> boss. He's, he's just... Every time I Did see him... Did you see the bit on... Uh, he was on the... Um, I think the Jonathan Ross show or something. You know the bit where he's in the prison cell and he, yeah. he knocks the food on the floor? Mm. He says that. That was all... Uh, what do you call it? Improvised, yeah. yeah. So apparently Al Pacino's there. And bear in mind, Al Pacino, like the legend, he is and Stephen Graham sitting opposite him. And apparently he said to one of the uh, cast, he said, make sure... There's loads, there's the loads of ice cream, like, because I want to do this scene. We might have to take it a few times. Yeah. And apparently he said, like, he wasn't meant to, like, hit the, hit the ice cream that, yeah. the way, do you know what I mean? And yeah. he's talking. And he meant to have this confrontation, but then Stephen Graham just goes, whacks <laughs> the food out the way and dies for him. <laughs> and then apparently Al Pacino was like, did you see that? He scared the shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> what you want to see it finished. <laughs> did Caprio did that, I think, with a, a glass or a mug or something, and he was bleeding. And um, I can't remember what film it was, um, but he kept on going, and he had blood pouring down. Really, it looked so real. I can't now. I'll try Wait, and find it. The best him. improvised story I've ever heard, unless you can trump me with this one, is uh, the guy who's uh, he passed away sadly. Um, he played the Joker. 
Yes, uh, he fled you. Yeah. yeah. Have you heard this one? No, no. Mate, get that scene up on YouTube. It's the one where our Batman and he's walking away from the hospital and he presses the clicker. What, you, what, what, what do I say? He blows the hospital up. Yeah. Yeah, where he's dressed as the, the nurse. Yeah, it's just like that. like Joker blows hospital up or something. He's... Oh, mate, listen to this then for a story. Yeah, it's there, yeah. So apparently in this this one, yeah, mm. fuck me, that top one. This one? Yeah. So I hope I don't this get, is we, like we, the ultimate improvisation. This, <laughs> where you can play it. I know, yeah, yeah. Let me just, um, I got a copyright claim the other day from fucking YouTube for putting... Uh, oh, did you? Yeah. Fuck for um, The Beach. Oh, really? The film, yeah. yeah. So obviously it's rigged up. This must yeah. have took however long to put all these explosions oh, in fuck. and apparently when he's clicking it and he does this bit in a minute where he, he like looks at it yeah the bombs had all stopped and he and they were like fuck it's not working and he just <laughs> improvised this last bit like it's obviously all meant to collapse at some okay. point and it stops like this this is improvised How cool is that like? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? That's brilliant. That must that. have just been rolling. They were like, just quick, fucking just keep doing wow. something. <laughs> That's brilliant. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that hospital's a mess, isn't yeah, it? What would you say know? your favourite film is then? I don't know, you know, you know my granddad's used to always like make us watch like Scorsese stuff. Mm. Um so but I also I, I don't know man, it's it'd either be once Upon a Time in America, but that's Sergio Leone. Have you seen that? No. That's fucking brilliant. It's long, though. If you think the Irishman's long? <laughs> Jesus. Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> the Irishman's at 10K. This is a marathon. <laughs> yeah, this is like... This is, it's it's long. It's a, it's De Niro. Um, I think it's all pesky, isn't it, actually? It's De Niro, James Woods. Um, it's brilliant. It's it's just sad. It's a brilliant... It's just br- I love it. Uh, Godfather. Um, yeah. I also yeah. I, I'm also uh, I like I like foreign cinema me mm. yeah like my ex Mrs who was with years ago she, like we were studying to be actors together and she really got me into like um, you know like, like foreign cinema and I like uh, there's a there's a film called The Samurai by a French director called Jean Pierre Melville and it's fucking boss yeah. it's a proper old art housey film yeah. it's got an actor in it called Alan Delon. He was talking about the other day, um, and he's brilliant. He's he's like he's a fucking masterful actor. It's great to just hear different opinions like this. Yeah, yeah. I've never watched yeah, anything man. like that. You know, they, like someone they're said good. to me, I love them. Have you watched, seen Nineteen Seventeen? Yeah, no, no. I, but I need to see it. Is Boss. I need to see it. I'm doing. I'm working on a project at the minute, and it's going to be. It's similar in its execution. You know, like a one. A one shot kind of thing, but I know that's not one shot, is it? You, you split it up into like eight parts, but it looks like it's like non stop take. Oh, so yeah, good, there was in Dunkirk, they did something like that, and it yeah. was like one of the long, it was like something mad, like two minutes 45. Yeah. And you know, the cameras are literally just falling. I'll try, I'll try and find it because yeah. it's incredible. How it's brilliant, man. There's a film called uh, Victoria, it's German, and that's all done in one take. And you know, you saw about improvising, mm. they've done like four or five takes, and um, this is the last take. And it's all done in one take, so it's not like you know you watch a film, it goes it cuts from scene to scene. Mm. It was like a play. And if if something went wrong this one time, oh, they'd have what? to like fuck it all off and do it scene by scene. And there's a bit in the film where they're talking in their uh, talking like an alleyway, and there's this film and he's just having a ciggy. And he's talking, he's saying his dialogue, and he drops his fucking ciggy, and you just see it flash across his face. And what's the natural thing to do if you drop your ciggy? I don't smoke, but if you drop a ciggy, what are you gonna do? Pick, it, pick up. it up, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> but a lot of fucking actors wouldn't, you know, they'd just go, fuck, and they'd go cut, but he's just gone, and he just picked it up and carried on, and you just know in that fucking one second, <laughs> he's just saved the entire film. Wow. <laughs> fucking brilliant. That was, um, this was the one I was on about, where it's just one, five minutes it was, just one single tracking shot here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's some takes from doing that. Like you said before, you can look at it and go, it's not the hardest thing in the world, you're just walking, but fuck me. Yeah, man. Getting, oh. It's getting when, when people are going across the camera as well, you know, they're all in time and stuff like that. But, I mean, it's five minutes on, but it gets quite interesting when they when they move up the beach, yeah. Yeah, my big thing would be then for you, mate, I know you're saying, like, you got your thing mm. on it, but hopefully, mate, this takes off this, and I wouldn't 
I wouldn't throw a towel in Sueri, mate. No, I, I mean, I probably won't. But I think what what years ago, I, I remember there was a period where I was like, I'd never give up. Mm. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, not for me, not for me. But now I'm just like, fucking hell, life's short, isn't it? Do, yeah. you, do you know what I mean? Mm. And while I, while I continue to enjoy it, I'll crack on with it. Mm. But if if I don't, I'll, I'll, I'm not going to yet. Because mm. it's just, it's life's too short, yeah. man. And I've, you know, it's one of them, I, I, I'm in my mid-30s now. And I'm kind of like, I want things out of life that most people do, do you know what I mean? And, you know, I've, I've been me, with my me missus for a few years and I've got to think about it. Mm. And about if we have a family, can, you know, if I'm asking, can sustain it can and I sustain stuff. that? Yeah. And yeah, yeah. So, I don't know. But as I say, that film, I've got, <clears> got a tangible thing. And if I do have kids and I'm not acting no more, I could say to them, well, there you go, there's... Treat that dumb one, I did that, you know what I mean? And they go, fucking hell, dad, you shit. Because they have Southern <laughs> accents, probably. <laughs> but, yeah, that's a good point, yeah. yeah. Does your, is your missus in acting or not? Or no, completely she's, just com- she's a linguist. Right. Um, oh, and wow. she's a yoga teacher. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's completely different, We met, yeah. we met her at a... My mate, who he's, he used to be an actor, he's a writer. No, we met her at his birthday party. And... Um, because she, she's mates with his old flatmates. So, we just met through that. And like, yeah. The rest is history. Yeah, she's boss, man. She's boss. She looks after me. <laughs> Listen, mate, I, uh, I hope it's going to be a huge success, which it will be, mate. And the, like you say, the great thing is it's on YouTube now. Yeah, yeah, it's just on watch, Just Google Seconds Out and it'll be there. Yeah, yeah I'll put, Seconds I'll, Out short film. I'll put the link in the description as well, yeah. Like you said, I think the most important thing is it's, it's going to hit people, whether it goes on and it's seen by a million people or not. If it helps one person, then... yeah. It's worth its weight in gold, I guess. Exactly, that's it. And, you know, you can say you've done something. It, 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 you yeah. know what I mean? That's it. Those messages are like, we get them sometimes with the podcast and like, no amount of money. Yeah. You know, when you get something as nice as when that guy messages yeah. you, do you know what I mean? You can't, it, you just, it literally just, your whole day just goes up, doesn't it? Hey, <laughs> on Saturday, mate, right, I took my little girl to London. We got a taxi and uh, the taxi driver was like, oh, mate, he just mentioned the Lego podcast straight away. And I was like, oh, did you listen to it? Yeah, he said, fucking hell, mate, every Monday morning it's banged on. I was like, oh, fucking hell, he's right. <laughs> Bosh, man. We spoke about it after 20 minutes into, mm. into the train station. And it's like it's like 12 quid taxi. And he said, uh, oh, don't worry about it. I was like, fuck off, I'm, it's your job, like, I'm paying you. He was like, no, don't worry about it. And uh, he was like, you fucking keep me entertained every Monday. It's the least I can do. And I was like, anyway, I paid him. But like I was then skipping into Lime Street then to me train. I was like, this fella like, was just going to let me off my taxi because he enjoys... <laughs> me and Tom and get <laughs> that's awesome. on on a Monday yeah, so it's quality isn't it it's, mate and no doubt this will do much more than that mate so uh, yeah go and watch it now thank, thank you on. mate so, that's anything else you want to say just before no yeah it's just seconds out short film on YouTube and uh, yeah that's it nice one thank you so much mate so, yeah